Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where we're going to be talking about a book I read recently, and that is this book. This is Alas, Babylon by Pat Frank, the startling novel of the end of the world and the day after. So this is a novel about nuclear war. The Soviet Union and the United States go to war in 1959. That's when this novel was published. And they just bomb the hell out of each other with nuclear weapons. Not a good thing. Bad idea all around. But that's what happens in this book. Now, this was written at a time of heightened tensions between the Soviet Union and the United States. Nuclear war, an eminent nuclear war, I think, was on a lot of people's minds. And Pat Frank, who wrote this book, Pat Frank, who lived from 1908 through 1964, was a writer of fiction, but also a journalist. And he knew a thing or two about military matters. And he was, he was a good person to, to write this book. It's really compelling. And as one of the first novels about nuclear war and its effects, this must have been really compelling reading at the time. I will say right off the bat that this is very much a book of its time. You can tell this book was written in 1959. As you would expect, you would expect this book to be of its time, and it is. In a way, uh, about certain things, it's very forward-thinking and even progressive in certain things, uh, particularly when it comes to matters of race. This was a time of segregation, which is talked about quite a bit, quite a bit in this book. And Pat Frank, you can tell, uh, was very progressive on this issue. He wanted to move past racial prejudice and put all of that behind us. And he shows in this book just how ridiculous it is and that how after a disaster of this magnitude, that whole kind of issue becomes moot, really. When it comes to uh, women, however, not so progressive. This is, again, you could tell that this was written in 1959. Uh, women are all relegated to either housewives or spinsters or that kind of thing. Uh, frankly, de the depiction of women in places in this book is kind of condescending at times. Not terrible, but again, it, you can really tell when this was written. But to me, that just makes it more interesting because it gives a snapshot of the time and what some of the political and social issues were at the time and what would happen if a nuclear war happened then as opposed to any other time. So all that just makes it more interesting. And as a novel, it's really compelling. It tells the story of a community of people that survive a nuclear war just out of sheer luck. All around them, cities are being bombed out of existence and people are dying from radiation poisoning and fallout. But because of where they are in Florida, in Fort Repose in Florida, uh, they survive. And the main character in this, Randy Bragg, is a guy from an old Southern family that has sort of fallen on hard times. This guy is kind of a drunk. He's a drunk. He's a womanizer. He's, he's sort of stagnating in his life, really. His brother is a colonel in the army and is doing quite well for himself. But Randy, not so much. He's, he's hitting the bottle kind of hard. But one day, his brother, who knows what's going on, you know, as far as military matters are concerned, sends him a message. And in the message, part of the message reads, Alas, Babylon, which is a code used between the brothers. And basically what his 
what Randy's brother is telling him is that with this coded message is that we are going to go to war with Russia and war is imminent. And uh, his brother, Mark, Mark's the colonel, Mark sends his wife and his child uh, to Randy's house in Fort Repose because he figures that it's not close enough to a lot of the targets that it might survive. It might, with luck. Mark knows that he's not going to survive because he's a military guy. He's at a military base, which is a main target. So when the war happens, which he knows it is, that he knows it is going to happen, he knows he's going to die. And basically, Fort Repose survives because it's not a main target and because the wind happened to be blowing in a certain direction to blow the fallout away from Fort Repose as opposed to Fort Repose. If, it, if the wind had been blowing another way, they'd all be dead or they'd all be dying of radiation poisoning. It was that close. So really lucky. And one of the things about this book when it comes to the community of survivors, there's a lot of luck involved. Randy and the people that he gathers about him, he, he becomes kind of a leader of this group. And they are very fortunate about where they live and their circumstances in that there's a water source uh, right next door. Randy's neighbors, uh, a black family, they have a spring on their property where they get their water. And so Randy and some other immediate neighbors all tap this spring, and so they've got a water supply. And they're just fortunate in some other ways. Uh, a doctor has survived, and the doctor lives there with Randy. And so that's a fortunate thing, which is not to say that a lot of bad stuff doesn't happen in this book. There's a lot of bad things that happen in this book. And it must have been something... Like I said, to read about this at the time and read about whole cities just being wiped off the map. It must have been a sobering thought. I mean, we've kind of gotten used to the idea of nuclear holocaust by this time. And I don't think many of us even think about it, even though it's still a threat. You know, this can still happen. But, you know, we don't worry about it. We worry about other things. But at the time, man, it was a major concern, you can tell. And the way the book is written, you really care about the characters. It's, you care about what happens to them. Even though they are very fortunate in their circumstances, it's, it's an excellent book all the way through. Good pacing, very well written. The characters, even though they are very much 1950s characters, are realistic characters for the most part. It is a very rated PG version of this kind of thing. It sort of feels like it could have been a film of this. You know, there's no swearing. No one, swear no one swears in, the in 1959 after the nuclear holocaust, you know. It's, it's, it's not as terrible or as awful as it actually would be not even close you know i think if this had, if a nuclear war had actually happened things would be a lot worse and so the survivors come across and are touched by the horrible events of what happens around them but not so much directly a lot of the god-awful things that happen in this book happen kind of off screen which you know if they didn't Everybody would be dead who you're following in this story. But an excellent novel, kind of fascinating in a way, and well worth reading because of what happens in the book, how the story is told, and just as a snapshot of the fears and concerns of people in 1959 at this particular time when this book was written. Really interesting book. I guess that's all I have to say about it. Alas, Babylon by Pat Frank. Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.